evening. Welcome to the Danvers Conservation Commission meeting for February 24th, 2022. Uh, we operate under the Massachusetts General Law, well, Chapter 131, the Section 40, level. the Woodlands Protection Act, and Chapter 26 of the Town of Danvers General Bylaw, the Woodlands Protection Bylaw. Uh, after each applicant presents his or her request, and the board has had time to ask questions and discuss the project, we will accept questions from the audience. Because this is a public meeting, it is required by law that you give your name and address first. Although we may disagree on the issues raised, all persons present during this meeting are expected to be civil, and to, to be civil towards all other meeting attendees. This includes the members of the commission, staff, abutters, concerned citizens, and property owners, and project applicants. We also request that you confine your questions to the project and as it pertains to the Wetlands Act. We cannot handle, nor do we have jurisdiction over such things as noise or traffic. All problems re related, all problems not related to the Wetlands Protection Act and the Town of Danvers Wetlands Protection Bylaw must be taken up with the other appropriate board. Uh, first order of business, uh, we have roll call. Uh, Peter Wilson is present. Vanessa Curran. Vanessa is not with us tonight. Kelsey King. Present. Ian McGill. Present. Michael Splain. Here. Okay, moving on to uh, the agenda. The first item is a request for a certificate of compliance. 79 Andover Street, DEP file number 14-1244. Uh, is someone here to represent the applicant? Yes, good evening for the record. John Morin from the Morin Cameron Group. We're here tonight representing Gallup and Realty Trust for a certificate of compliance request for the property located at 79 Andover Street, which is Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, the commission may recall this project uh, came before you back in 2014 for the construction of a drive-through. Uh, all work was done in 2014. They just never filed for a COC. Uh, we actually did the work in the fall. Actually, we did the as-built work right after they finished it, but they had never filed the COC request. We went back out, verified that the as-built conditions still represent the as-built work we did in 2014. Uh, we did notice that there's a slight encroachment over the lot line onto the abutter, over the lot line onto the abutter. Um, George is kind of pointing that out. <clears throat> it's about a three-foot encroachment. The owners have reached out to New England Power. Um, that's why we didn't file in the fall, because we've been trying to get in touch with New England Power about that. We're just getting nowhere. So what I said to the client is we'd file and we'll just keep reaching out to New England Power uh, to get them. Some of the commission members, if you were on when this was approved, you may recall there was a huge gravel area encroachment on that property. Um, that area was allowed to all revegetate on its own as part of the order. Um, the pavement is no closer to the wetlands than the original approved plan, so that little encroachment doesn't get any closer to the wetlands. That location is actually about 84 feet from the wetland edge. Uh, everything else is in compliance, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Um, quick question more for staff. Georgia, have you been out to visit the site? Um, I personally did not go out, but our field tech, Sean, has been out, and he compared with the asphalt plan and found no issues that weren't noted that John had found. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay, just going to pass it around to the board, see if they have any other questions. Uh, Mike, do you have any questions? Just, so on the as-built, is there a, uh, any significant difference between the original plan and the as-built? No, the only thing is that slight encroachment over the property line. And that you're dealing with? Yes. Yeah. That's all I had, thank you. Uh, Chelsea? Um, sure, what is the neighboring lot? Is that just like... A wetland area or it's is a wetland like in new england power so they have power lines through there oh okay that's why you're so, trying to get in touch with them okay. it's not like anybody's going to use that for anything right um we just tried to get notification through them and as you could imagine trying to get in touch with the proper channels at yeah. new england power is difficult yeah okay so it's just some pavement that yes. that area had already been previously disturbed correct it was actually okay. the area that was previously disturbed. Um, actually extends into the no, um, the no structure buffer zone. Okay. It was all just gravel at the time. And what they, as part of the order of conditions that was issued, the gravel was removed, it was loamed, and then it was seeded, so it just comes back. It's not really maintained lawn, it's just kind of 
herbaceous type layer. Sounds good to me. All right, um, that's all I had. Okay, thanks. Uh, Anne, any questions? No, no questions. Uh, okay, I have no further questions. Uh, I mean, it, it, everything looks like it's you know built to the plan. Uh, that's a good thing. Um, so if someone could make a motion, we could issue a certificate of compliance. I'll make a motion that we um, order a certificate of compliance for 79 Andover Street, DEP file number 14 1244. Motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Um, next order, next item on our agenda is a notice of intent for 160 Andover Street. DEP file is still not available. Uh, as a result, the applicant has requested to continue to our March 10th. Um, so if someone can make a motion that we continue uh, the hearing until then. I make a motion that we continue the hearing for the notice of intent for 160 Andover Street DEP file number 14-137 blank. The motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, uh, next item is uh, 200 North Street, DEP file number 14-1377. The applicant is North Street Association, which is uh, formerly the Glen Mobile Home Park. Uh, is someone here to represent uh, the, the association? Yeah, I am. This is uh, Dan Ritchie. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Yep. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I'm the engineer of record for the project, and... Um, I think Mary Rimmer, uh, I don't see her online. I don't know if she's there in person or not, but she, uh, if she's not here, she should be here shortly. Uh, this is a, uh, this is a brook restoration, uh, at, uh, uh, the Glen Mobile Park. Um, bear with me a second. Okay. Um, this is the Glen Mobile Park. Uh, in the uh, in the north corner of the property is where Nichols Brook and uh, and a close by uh, trailer park uh, trailer uh, mobile home was um, within a few feet of the top of the <clears throat> bank that was eroding <clears throat> and. Most of the work has already been done under an emergency order. There were uh, a few sections. I'll blow this up right here. This is Nichols Brook right here. This is the restoration area. This is the mobile home that's right near the top of the bank. And, uh, and the work that was done in the emergency order was the stone armoring from this point of the beginning of the eroded area to this point at the end of the uh, eroded area. And uh, I can talk a little bit about uh, the two types of armoring. It's uh, <clears throat> similar to Force Frost Fish Brook uh, armoring where we had larger stone on steeper areas. And, uh, and then we also had uh, regular just stone riprap placed in the, uh, in the in the flatter section um, on either side to uh, transition it back to the vegetated slope. Uh, there are a few things left to do um, under the regular part of the NOI. Uh, this uh, coir log is proposed to go along the tow. Uh, I see Mary's online now. She could speak uh, to that a bit. And, uh, and then a few housekeeping things. There's a permanent fence that needs to be installed along the top of the bank that goes from here, just, I'll just trace it over because it's a little busy uh, all the way over to here. So basically the, the permanent fence runs along the top of the bank along the eroded area and then a little bit, a little bit past, um, which needs to be done when things thaw out. Um, the, uh, the contractor, this was the staging area that they used to access the um, uh, work area and when they were done with that, they graded it off and mulched it and seeded it. And, uh, and then they also have a coir log that's existing along 
the transition area for for where they accessed at the toe of the of the slope there. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'll turn it over to Mary if you, you want to add anything to that. Thanks, Dan, and, and my, my apologies for being a little bit late. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Um, and thank you um, to the commission for your um, help in, in getting the emergency certificate issued for this project and, um, and coordinating with us on this. It was very helpful. Um, the only thing I would add, and I think that they, the contractor did a, a really good job in, in, in really um, sticking with the plan detail, is that um, the core log detail that we show at the base of the riprap slope is, um, I'm afraid that might stick out into the channel a little bit too far. I would like, I, I definitely like that the contractor put it within the, st um, the staging area and that portion of the bank that is earth and slope and will remain so. And we can plant behind that core log and within it um, in spring um, with a with a planting plan. But the um, I, I don't I hesitant to install the core log at the base of the riprap slope. And I am open to um, the commission's yes comments on that. That's a great photo that shows the location of the staging area and the loam and seed that they did um, and mulch following the completion of work and you can see the core log installed at the, along the, the river's edge there um, and it just would stick out a little bit too far into the channel I think um, in seeing now that it's complete where it is uh, that that I would hesitate to do it there that's about 50 feet I think there's two lengths of core log there We do have a DEP file number, which you probably are aware of, and they did not have any comments. Um, and uh, we, and I think we have provided you. This was from the. This must have been from the monitoring reports that we submitted. This photo. Mary, I put the photo up. I, I took that photo when I was last out there on February 21. Got it. Okay. Thank you. So that's recent. You can see there's quite a bit of debris in the stream, um, some some wood and whatnot. That stream that was pre-existing, and it might have been that um, I don't know stuff washes down that stream. I'm not sure. This because this is upstream of the uh, the work area. Hey, are you all set? Yes, thank you. Okay, uh, I'm sure we'll have some questions. So I'm just going to uh, start with Mike. Uh, yeah, just uh, some of the suggested questions. So uh, what's the timeline for the plantings? Uh, this spring. So as soon as some co feels that they can um, uh, obtain the, the plantings and install them, they, they we'd like to wrap it up as soon as possible. Are the plantings, um, are they intended to sort of hold the bank or, or do they have, you know, besides how they look, do they have a functional purpose? Yeah, they were, it was, they're selected for their wildlife habitat value. So really it just would be on the, on the slope immediately upgrading of the, the core logs and their willows and um, alders mostly um, that I think some dogwood that are proposed along that edge just to provide some woody vegetation and stabilization. The area has been seeded with the New England um, Conservation and Wildlife Seed Mix, so it'll kind of develop into its own um, meadow, wild wild grasses and sedges and um, wildflowers in that area. And do you feel that, that doing that, uh, along with the uh, what steps you've taken, that that will prevent further erosion? Yes, so it was certainly easy to do it in this section here because this was just the staging area and there wasn't really any any slope treatment provided here. Yeah. So um, that yes, the, we'll just add some vegetation. There was a limited amount of clearing that had to happen in order to get some staging, some equipment down um, to the work area. Uh, excuse me, Mike. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Are there any pictures looking uh, the opposite direction? Yep. Because this is where the planting is. Yeah. Not a, not a, this is just a flat area. 
Yeah. Do you have some of those? Yeah. This, this okay, is. So this is uh, go ahead, Mary. Uh, yeah, this is looking downstream from the, um, you know, the downstream end of the staging area, and you can see the, the mobile home corner um, in the in the background there. What what structure are we looking at? The That's oh, it's one there, of them. Yeah. There you go. So where, yeah. As we look Better at this view. picture right here, where will the plant things be in the in the middle of that area? The I guess you call it gravel. Right under the notice of intent, it, you know, they were proposed right along the shoreline, um, just between the shoreline and the, you know, the in between the stones at that very, you know, Grand within a, just a couple feet of the shoreline. So between the stones, the riprap stones and the, um, the erosion control bales in that uh, yeah, so so it's a little confusing. This section that you're looking at, the stone section, does not have any um, erosion control. It's go the slope goes straight down to the water. Right. So there's limited opportunity for planting, is what I'm saying. In that stone, we can we can try to put a few um, tubelings, like small um, saplings of of. Um, uh, shrubs within the void spaces between some of the rocks to try to get some vegetation growing in it. But I, I would like to move most of the plantings to the staging area, you know, the the, the loam embankment there. Still a question. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mike, do you have any other no, Just to you know, pick up again. So uh, with regard to the stones, uh, how were the stones placed there? Did you do that as part of the erosion uh, control? Dan, you want to take that one? Yeah. So the uh, the larger stones. I'm trying to pull up a picture to to show that a little better. Uh, the larger stones were placed individually and uh, and just stacked on top of each other and then filled behind uh, behind the slope with with crushed stone to stabilize it. Um, the uh, the smaller stone. Uh, this is on the uh, the at the end of the on the downstream end where the small stone ends and it transitions back to a vegetated slope. Uh, these stones were placed with an excavator bucket to a depth of 18 inches uh, along, you know, from the bottom of the slope to the top of the slope. Yeah, I just, uh, I just jo if uh, I could ask Georgia, yeah, is that an acceptable yeah, method for method this type of erosion, erosion control? control? Yes, definitely. It is. Okay. And how are you going to be able to put plants where those zones are without disturbing the, the bank there? Yeah, um, so you can actually wade in the river, you know, and, and hand plant them um, just at the very base where it doesn't, it's hard to see in the photo, but there are some void spaces that are, are um, small enough to put two inch tubelings, they're called, um, in, in between some of the void spaces of the rock and they can, they root in pretty much anything. Um, and I think that they they will be able to take. I just didn't want to put the core log um, as a. It, sometimes when we complete these projects, the commissions or DEP looks to try to green it up as much as possible and, and provide some additional habitat value within the bank. This is a good uh, a nice view. So you can see the stone goes right up to the edge of the water, and there's not a lot of room without interfering with the no. flow of the river, um, sticking in a, another one of those core logs, those those um, coconut fiber logs within the, um, along the base of that slope. So what I'd like to be able to do is just install, you know, some plantings along that bottom edge, just within like two feet or less of the shoreline itself yeah. and um, allow some shading of the river in that location. So when, and you said in the spring, I mean, we're really talking in, in a month or two. Um, yep. Yep, so, it'll be done, and exactly. And who's going to be in charge of compliance with this to make sure it's done? Uh, that's, you know, it's under your enforcement order, or your emergency know, certificate, I'm from sorry. From the park, is, there, is, this, is the order addressed to some individual in the park or the manager or how? It's, it's the association. So it, it, that park has been sold to the um, the residents now. So it's the North Street Association is a, essentially the homeowners association that is the applicant for this. Well, so the when they have an order of conditions, they will the, they'll be the responsible party for um, 
ensuring compliance and getting a certificate of compliance in the end. All right, thank you. That's all the questions I had. Uh, Kelsey, any questions? Sure. Uh, Mike got to most of them, but I just, what was your concern with the, uh, the core log sticking out into the channel? Like, why did that seem to not be good? Um, because I didn't want to restrict the channel width, essentially. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was the only other question I had. Okay, thanks, Chelsea. Yeah, Ian, any questions? Um, as, as you're looking put, to put the plantings in, um, is there a concern for um, deluges, <laughs> shall we say, <laughs> in the future? Oh, um, yeah. The plants, <laughs> will they stay stand up? Yeah, they're they're perf they're selected specifically as bank restoration plantings. So New England wetland plants provides a, a number of you know uh, fast growing, qu uh, quickly rooting um, uh, transplants that you can use for this purpose. Okay, so in other words, even with a heavy spring, they should take to the ground and start blooming. <laughs> You would hope they would have to be replaced <laughs> if they're not, um, but that's that's the goal. Sometimes there are some there's some mortality or some loss from right. you know an unexpected and really heavy flood event um, before they get fully ro rooted. That's you know we we hope that doesn't happen, but it it does occasionally happen. Um, will the homeowners association take over the maintenance in the future of the plantings? It, yes, until a certificate of compliance is issued. Yes, and okay. then it, it, there there shouldn't be any maintenance once they're rooted and established. Mm -hmm. um, they, it, there shouldn't be any need to do anything. Okay, all right, very good. Thank you. Sure. Okay, so just uh, just to kind of summarize, um, you're hoping to begin planting when the next month or two, once the winter breaks and spring begins. Yeah, I would say May at the earliest, but. In, in the end of June at the latest. All right, so not till May. Um, and is there a plan for, for monitoring how these plants are, are doing as uh, as they're establishing themselves? Uh, we we certainly can, you know, provide you with regular monitoring reports if, if you, the commission would like. Sure. Um, how how yeah. can we do that logistically, Georgia? Do they just updates? Uh, update you. Update monthly, yeah. quarterly, or do you go out there and see it? Um, so I would say if Mary wanted to provide what they had almost provided for the emergency work was, um, I don't think we need them weekly. If you want to do quarterly or monthly, what seem what you have done um, regularly for your other monitoring jobs? Sure. Yep. I mean, typically what we do is a report once they're installed, and then um, one, you know, towards the end of the growing season to make sure that you know there is still time for replacement within the growing season if we need to so typically in september and then um there's not a lot of you know then we don't monitor during the non-growing season but would look at again in the next spring if we needed to mm -hmm. okay can we just make a schedule on that that they'd be planted in may to june yep. inspected in september yeah and re-inspected uh say next april can i uh address a question to staff uh Yes, you may, Mike. Yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. So, George, uh, um, we're going to issue an order of conditions today. Um, at what point would they be able to get a? Would they would they have to get a certificate of compliance? And at what point would they do that? Um, so, I would not suggest you know they plant them and then two weeks later you issue a certificate of compliance. It, it's usually after two, two, growing, two growing seasons, seasons or once something's really established themselves. Um, I think here in this job it would be a bit obvious what's taken and what hasn't as Mary had said the species they're planting are very hardy so they very well could take but um, it really and it's also up to the applicant to file it so right. we can't make them and um, it should be at least a year maybe to see if everything takes but also I, I was just thinking out loud I mean normally these would be recorded at the registry of deeds mm -hmm. that's not going to be the case here no it will this will be recorded it will be recorded yep. yeah okay Yep, this is just the same as a, a regular notice of intent. It's just after the fact. You know, most of the work is already done, so we're we're permitting it after the fact, mm -hmm. except for the plantings. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. There's been also been a, a, a since this photo was taken. There's a been a um, a temporary fence installed along the top of the slope, and that is. I think Dan, you may have already mentioned it, but that's to be replaced with a chain link fence. That's right. I I actually don't know if I said. I I think I did say that actually. Yeah. Um. So when when it thaws out enough to get a permanent fence in, then we'll replace that temporary fence. Uh, with um. With, with something that'll create a break in between the, the the slope and the area above. And then there's a little bit of work to do on the gutters um, and downspout to make sure that that doesn't create uh, erosion from the roof runoff. That's right. Okay, I mean, it looks so much better than uh, I saw. <laughs> yeah, it was a little scary, yeah. Very scary. Okay, good. Um, are there any questions from the public? Sir? Uh, Bill Bradstreet, uh, Essex Street in Danvers, a town meeting member. In this picture and the other one with the earth and berm, just the earth and slope. Are the plantings they're talking about, do they have the densest, densest root system to hold this back? Any wash or whatever? And she talked about the uh, gutters and uh, to divert the, where is the water gonna be diverted to if it's diverted away from this bank and the other one that was shown? So, Dan, if you want to handle the, the roof runoff question, I can handle the other one. Yeah, so um, we're, we're not really diverting it. It's, if, if, if you can see in this picture the remnants of a downspout that just pours right, you know, at the top of the slope, um, really with the, with the stone there, it's pretty well equipped to handle concentrated flows. But all, all we're really proposing to do is not divert it, but to just replace the downspout and put a splash pad to disperse that concentrated flow a bit and spread it out before it starts to flow down the slope. And then the other a question about the, the loamed um, section of the embankment, that's a much lower and um, less steep section of the bank and it really isn't as susceptible to erosion. You can see it's before the bend in the river there and kind of a, a straighter section. and. Um, Yes, I think that that uh, it's it definitely will with with the plantings installed. It should hold that bank nicely, especially those the, with the core log there, and that will stay in place and de and decompose in place, and it will allow vegetation. It will become its own organic mat, and vegetation will grow within it as well. I'm, I'm looking at the photos and it appears that the water is slowly eating away at the base of the trees and exposing some of the roots. That's on the, on that, the other side of the stream? On this picture that I can see, yes. And what bothers me is we've had several hundred year storms recently. And if a downspout is going to wash through these stones, I have, and I'm sure you have seen areas where the water has washed underneath these stones to weaken the stone holding the earth back. That's why I asked where that water was going to go, if it was strictly going to go with a pipe or spout or whatever into the water, that's one thing, but just to lay it on the ground is, uh, doesn't seem to me to be uh, good enough to hold the dirt above and underneath the rocks back. And with the storms, as I say, we've had recently, when you have one or two inches of rainfall in a short area, I can picture this earth, the earth under the rocks is gonna be eaten away relatively quickly. I mean, if what the, you're saying, this system is good for 20 years, that's one thing. I just can't, in my mind, picture something yes. lasting that long. As I say, I'm looking at what appears to be roots of some of the trees because the brook has slowly eaten away. Uh, am I clear or? Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. no you're, you're correct. And that was what the problem was in this location. And that's why that this work was done. The, the 
the downspout is collecting a you know pretty small area of, of this little mobile home and um, what isn't really clear on the picture is that this rock slope has been bedded in uh, with with um, geotextile material and smaller stone as well as larger stones so there's a layered system in here that interlocks and maybe Dan can you can talk about how that's specifically designed to prevent the kind of erosion that you're talking about. Yeah, I really think that uh, you know the, the Mary's exactly right. The slope. I don't. I don't have a good picture of it um, that I can put my hands on readily. But the slope was graded off, and then the geotextile was put over it, and then uh, the crushed stone on top of that, and then the large stone on top of that. So, uh, you know, the water uh, is going to flow through the crushed stone layer above the geotextile. I. I. I just don't think that that small uh, roof area that's tributary to that one downspout is substantial enough to warrant more. But with that said, I don't really have a strong feeling about it either. If somebody was um, uh, pushing to extend the downspout uh, and pipe it through the stone to the bottom and disperse it that way, I just I, I don't really have a problem with that. I just, in my opinion, I don't think it's necessary. Again, my question Again, is I, with the vegetation that's available, and I'm not anyone who knows anything about that, would a planting with a very dense root system, are they available? Not all root balls look the same. Some are smaller, some are spread out. Are the choices made for the vegetation the proper ones for holding the earth in place here in this instance. That's what we have the expert for, and she's telling us that it is. Okay. Yep. And you'll be checking in, would you say, six months or a year from now? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. We won't issue a certificate of compliance unless no, we're they satisfied. We're going to have a condition of that it's going to be inspected mm -hmm. uh, when it's planted, the end of the growing season, and then. Uh. I guess we'll hope for the best then. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Mr. Duggan? I presume it's Mr. Duggan. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Matthew Duggan, Sluckman. Yeah. You said uh, an observation that this these photos are much different than the ones we saw several weeks ago, which triggered the emergency order. Um, I'm, I'm curious about the impact that this work had uh, on the width of the river. Um, has, the, has this riprap and this hardened bank, has it extended out into what was originally uh, recently water? In, in other words, has the, the size of the plot for that mobile home has that increased at all no, the top area of the the bank is the same um but this you know the slope the the bank eroded at the water level so it kept this the river kept widening at that location as the bank was collapsing so that we what we tried to do with this, this, this design is maintain that the same channel configuration as exists upstream and downstream um, of this location. So the toe stones are within what are we're trying to reestablish as the, the limit of that river in that location. Okay. All right. Thank you. So for it doesn't create new any any more real estate for them at all because the top of the slope is at the same location as it is now. But you can see that the the original bottom of slope has moved substantially towards the um, the mobile home that we were trying to protect. So it was it was scoured out at that location, and it was a, it was basically a vertical um, vertical drop right, right there. Right, and so so now that this bank is hardened, now that slothing will occur um, on the other side of the river, uh, where it's. Um, Dirt. So the current of the river will be modified somewhat. So you'll have erosion in other on probably on the bank on the other side. I wanted to ask about that core log. It looks like sort of like a silk fo silk fo um, sock. Sock. Mm -hmm. So 
Is this uh, core log, is this, I'm not familiar with them. Can you just describe a little bit about what their uh, life expectancy is and what the, what purpose, what the purpose is? Yeah, they're really just meant to be temporary erosion control um, until, until permanent vegetation can be established. So there's, they're creating a total slope so we don't lose the loam and seed that's, uh, that's a, been installed above it um, and prevent that from eroding into the river. Um, and then because it's made of organic material, it's a coconut fiber that's, um, that's been wrapped in twine. And so it's completely degradable um, and it will just sort of gradually sink into the earth. It's, it will remain in place. Once everything is established, we can pull the stakes out. But the idea is that it'll be um, well covered in vegetation by the end of this next growing season. Okay, so they have actually get grass and everything growing, growing entirely within them. So it's a basically it's it's an erosion control and a planting medium at the same time. I see. Okay, so it's biodegradable and that it doesn't it's, require anyone to come and remove it at some point. No, you can pull the stakes if someone choose. You know, if they if if it becomes if they get debris hung up in them or something like that, then that, it might be worth pulling the stakes out. But um, I it's needed right now to secure the location. Sure, I understand. Okay, all right, thank you for that uh, explanation. I appreciate it. Thank sure. you very much. No That's all thank I have. You. Thank you. Um, any other questions, comments? Uh, Georgia? I did just want to preface for clarity too. There's core logs from the Fr Frost Fish Brook project that are still in, they're still there. And I don't know if you could see them from some of the road crossings, but they've established nicely and they have um, nice vegetated stakes coming out and they're doing exactly what they're supposed to do. So this wasn't a suggested one because of frost fish brook, but this is common in a bank stabilization project. Okay, yeah, I use coconut fiber in like my house plants and stuff too. Yeah, it's I a know. good substrate, yeah. Oh, good to know. Um, okay, so I think our first order of business is to close the public hearing. Do you want to make a motion? I make the motion to close the public hearing for the notice of intent 200 North Street DEP file number 14-1377. Motion to May, is there a second? I'll second. second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay, now next order of business is uh, order of conditions. Sure, issue an order of conditions with uh, any specific uh, um, conditions we want to add to it. All right, I'll make a motion that we issue an order of conditions on the Emergency Bank Stabilization Project, uh, Applicant North Street Association, Glen Mobile Home Park. Uh, and do we have a number? Uh, yes. Do we have a number for this now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, DEP file number four NOI number fourteen one three. What is it? Seven seven seven. seven. seven seven. Thank you. And that um, with the conditions that uh, the con applicant continues to um, mm -hmm. utilize temporary erosion control until the plantings are put in place, with the further condition that the applicant. Uh, install adequate uh, downspout uh, from the uh, trailer uh, to uh, prevent or reduce any further erosion from water uh, coming off that downspout by use of a spreader or um, other acceptable uh, measure. Uh, and that the applicant uh, provide uh, staff with uh, updates and uh, submit a final plan for the plantings if they haven't already have they done that I don't think so. no, no. And submit no. is that all right with you Georgia yeah yeah okay those are the conditions I can think and of the fourth one is just uh, the inspection and the inspection mm -hmm. and when would the inspection take place so it's uh, upon installation and then after and it's gonna then the first growing season first growing and then season. again in April yeah okay all right Okay, thank you, Mike. That's uh, the motion. motion. May, is there a second? I second the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, next up is a notice of intent for 47 Collins Street, DEP file number 14 1375. The applicant is Old Salem Village Condominium. Is there someone here to. Oh, John. Yes. Okay. Good evening. For the record, John Morin from the Morin Cameron Group. We're here tonight representing Old Salem Village Condominiums 
for the property located at 47 Collins Street. So this project is nothing more than a repaving project. So this development was built probably in the early 80s. Uh, it doesn't look like the, the existing road system within the development has been repaved since it was built. It's actually in relatively great shape, um, but it's just old. It does have a lot of cracks, and they just want to stop moving forward with uh, repaving plans for the entire development. So as you can see, we did an extremely detailed topographic mapping of the entire property. We do have Cranes Brook located at the back of the property, so we do have riverfront. And we've got bordering vegetated wetlands around the property. So this front page, which is a, a high-level detailed topo, but it's also pretty much the entire site. What we tried to do to try to make it a little more legible is all the blue lines are, you know, the 100-foot riverfront, the 200-foot riverfront, green are wetlands, and then the green uh, setbacks are shown on the plan from the wetlands. You've got your no disturb, your no build, and your 100-foot buffer. So on the site, um, there's approximately 254,000 square feet of riverfront. The proposed project is um, what we did is we pretty much divided the project up into three types of paving projects. You've got your general, they're going to mill and overlay. Real basic, everything's exact. Again, just to reiterate, there's no increases in pavement. It's strictly a repaving project of existing paved roadways. So the majority of the site is really just a mill and repave. They just got to come in, mill it, and repave it. Then we get a little more detailed, which you see the, the pinkish areas. Those are areas that are mill and repave. However, the paver just has to pay a little attention to what he's doing because the water's heading to certain places, certain catch basins. They're having some current ponding issues. We had walked the site and we identified those areas as areas that as long as the paver pays attention when he's doing it, it's not a problem. And then we had six areas that we actually have to regrade the sub base. So they're actually going to have to mill the entire pavement, regrade the sub base. Um, again, we're only talking, you know, half an inch, I mean half a foot. But it's enough that we felt that these areas actually needed detailed grading plans. So further in the pl uh, plan set, you will see that for those areas, we actually created grading plans. Out of those six areas that had to be regraded, only areas H, S, and T are located within the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands. None of these grading areas are within any of the riverfront. So out of those three areas, you've got H, S, and T, which is approximately 4,235 square feet that's in the buffer zone. Again, the reason for those grading plans was for to ensure that the water gets to where it was supposed to go, where it was originally designed. There's existing catch basins out on the site where all this runoff is heading to. So when you start looking at the numbers, as I had mentioned, total riverfront on the property is over 254,000 square feet. Existing pavement within the zero to 100 foot riverfront that has to be just repaved, standard repaving, is about 1,800 square feet. The 100 to 200 is around 1,400 square feet. So you're looking at a total of about 15,000, almost 16,000 square feet, which is only 6.3% of the riverfront. So it, met, it meets the standards under the Wetlands Protection Act for alteration in the riverfront. With regards to the wetland buffer zone and setbacks, you've got existing pavement within the zero to 35 of 4,600 square feet mm -hmm. that'll be repaved. Um, Again, there's no increase in pavement. It's a just existing pavement. 35 to 50, you're looking at around 10,700. Uh, 50 to 100, you're looking at around 45,380. So total alteration in the buffer zone, which overlaps the riverfront, is around 60,800. Again, out of that 60,800, there's only about 4,200 that requires attention for grading. 
Everything else is nothing more. They're going to go out, they'll mill it, and just repave it Excuse right in me. the same location. Um, can I just interrupt quickly? Sure. What's the milling? Are you talking about a machine that chews up you the, got it. what's there and puts it back down? Yep. It, it, all right, thanks. I thought so. Thank yep. you. So, again, what we did is we put those detailed grading plans together. I actually had a meeting with Steve King, town engineer, last week because we wanted to talk to Steve about does this project um, rise to the level that you need a stormwater permit? And unfortunately, it does because it falls under rehabilitation, and that's the, the threshold that we're tripped into under alteration under the stormwater standards. However, engineering department's not looking for a lot of um, alterations to the existing drainage. Really, all that Steve had asked us to do is he wants us to go out and verify which cast catch basins have hoods in them and for the catch basins that are closest to discharge points he wants us to see if we can retrofit if those catch basins don't have hoods if we can retrofit those basins to put hoods in them so obviously it's not going to change the the grading plans at all it's really just retrofitting an existing catch basin structure with a hood on the outlet so it's not going to change the actual plans itself other than we'll have to call out on the plans what we're going to do and then we'll show that detail um, on the plan sorry can i interrupt with a question sure what do you mean by hoods on the catch basin so on on your standard catch basin that you have now you have a four foot sump and there's a either an outlet t or a hood over the outlet pipe so that the floatables that are in the catch basin don't just flow right out of the structure Mm -hmm. okay. So what Steve had asked us to do is trying to retrofit every catch basin in the development is a pretty high um, threshold. So he wants us to identify catch basins that are closer to the main outfalls and, if possible, retrofit those structures so we can try to get a little more protection for the outfall going into the, the wetlands. Okay. So... It's a pretty basic project. I mean, it's obviously a big project, but it's just a repaving project. Um, and like I said, we've identified the areas that require special grading uh, that are in your jurisdiction. We've got um, the other two plans that were submitted with the plan set have those details. They're 20 scale details, so they're easily, easily to read. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any other questions. I am not going to request that the commission close the hearing uh, because we do, um, like I said, we need to get out to the site, take a look at these catch basins. I do not anticipate having to change the plans other than showing details. Um, however, I, don't, I would hate to close the hearing and then find that I had to grade something different and then had to come in and modify the plans. So. Um, I'm not going to request to close the hearing, but I'd be more than happy to answer any questions. Uh, one quick question, and then I'm going to turn it over to the other members of the board. Uh, you said that the, uh, the paving company has to do certain grading correctly for this to work. Yep. Who will be uh, monitoring their work? We'll be meeting with them before the project, and we'll re be reviewing the plans with them. Um, Georgia, if you could go to, say, the second sheet. Mm -hmm. Just to show you an example, these are the grading plans that they, they get. So they're 20 scale details, it's got spot grades. I mean, it's pretty much all spelled out right on the plan. And they know, you know where the water needs to get. We just felt that these six areas just needed a little more attention and that's why we created the grading plan. We, just, we want it to work, so we just want to make yep. sure as the work is being done that it's done correctly? Correct. We don't want we don't want the project to be done and say, oh, the, the contractor did it wrong. Trust me, in Old Salem Village condominiums doesn't want that as well. So they, they've, they've actually even talked to us about uh, providing inspectional services during some of the paving if the site contractors so need it. Okay, so I think we would, we would want that. Yep, part of the and that's fine, order. you know, as a condition, that's what fine. What is it we want? Yeah, just supervision of the contract and make sure he's doing the grading work well, the way that they had with like a wetland guy or somebody like that you mean no, or just with the engineers and the paving people 
just yep. to make sure they're doing, you know, the water's going where they want it to go to. Yeah, and it's really, it's only isolated to these six areas that we have to just grade. Everything else is. I just don't want people just saying it's not my responsibility yep. to walk them away. Uh, okay, that's the only question I'll ask, and I'll, I'll turn it over to the other members of the board. So, Mike. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, uh, our chairman just talked about a condition of, of somebody overseeing this. Uh, who, who would you have in mind for that? I, I, mean, I mean, the easiest thing, obviously, would be one of the engineers from our office. It's so not really in house, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't need to be an environmental scientist because you're not really dealing with wetland replication or anything like that. It, it's all really grading. Okay. So now, has somebody established the existing flows so that you have a, a something to measure against? In other well, words, you know how everything's flowing now, and, you, and you, when it's done, you want to make sure it's, you've replicated that, correct? They right. So what we did is, as you saw on that first page, we did a detailed topographic mapping of the entire property. So what we were able to do as part of our job, and when we identified these issues, we found those areas that, um, and you could see it out on the site where the water is supposed to, for example, the water is supposed to get from here to that catch basin over there. However, over the years, you've got settling and other things, so you've got a lot of undulations in the topography. So on some of them, it was simple to just show on the plan, just grade it to get the water over there. Other ones, the, the grade change is so tight that's when we come up with the detailed plan so that we know that the water will get from point A to point B as long as it's graded per the plan that we put together. And then and you'll confirm, the was, at the end, you'll confirm that yep. it's all doing what you've identified. Right, correct. And then you talked about the, uh, the hooded catch basins and uh, that uh, Steve King wanted you to, uh, to put hoods on the ones that are closer. What, what are you calling closer? I mean, do you have a number? No, we haven't even evaluated that yet. So really, what we'll be doing is, say for example, just as an example, there's a drain manhole roughly in this vicinity that's flowing this way that discharges right prior to the wetland. A couple of the catch basins that are, exist upstream of that manhole is what we would propose to add um, hoods to. Okay. So that we can provide a little more protection to the resource area prior to discharge. And all these catch basins, do they all discharge to the wetland? Eventually, yes. They all do? Yep. Yeah, it doesn't appear that any of the drainage within this development is tied into any of the street drainage out on Collins Street. Right. Right. And uh, how many outlets would you guess there are uh, um, coming off the property? I couldn't even tell you. I didn't even add them up. I mean, if I had to guess, there's probably at least 12. Well. But there's probably more than that. But I could look that up. Yeah. And like I said, we're not going to ask to close tonight. So... Once we get an idea of what catch basins we're going to, um, if we even have to retrofit them, we may get out there and find out that they all have hoods anyway. Mm -hmm. um, once we verify that, we'll be modifying the plan. I'll come back to the commission and then I'll be able to point out on this plan which basins we're going to uh, be retrofitting. And at that same time, I will show you guys where all the outlet points are. And are those find. permanent retrofits or is yeah, they're permanent. They're permanent. Thank yep. you. That's all I had. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Chelsea? Sure. So um, since these, these have all been divided up into their own sections, uh, does that mean that these are going to be done in phases, or is this all going to be like one big thing, or they what's the timeline? They haven't figured out what they're going to do yet. I mean, obviously, to try to do this all at once will be a major expense, yeah. um, but they may try to do that. Um, they just haven't decided what they're going to do. Obviously, when it is done, what you're going to see is you're going to be doing sections like as you come in up to here, mm -hmm. and then they'll do that section. And the, 
obviously they're not going to do the whole place at once and just make you know blow the whole place up mm -hmm. so they'll be doing just lengths at a time right okay um also you have like a little legend over here saying that like things that are highlighted in white um is the limit of the mill and overlay things in red are mill overlay with attention to grading and drainage and yellow is limit of full depth pavement replacement can you go into more detail about what the full depth pavement replacement is yeah so the full depth pavement replacement is the six areas that i was talking about that we had to show the deep that we did all the details on on the next two pages okay so they're literally going to mill out all the pavement and get down to the subgrade okay because then they're going to regrade the subgrade based on our grading plan and then repave it all so that it grades the way we graded it on the plant and then that brings it back to the original intent okay. when the roads were built okay so that versus the red stuff where everything's uh you know it's special attention to grading and drainage right so the white and the red mm -hmm. Those are the areas that they're just going to mill and pave it. Okay. The white areas are the ones where they don't even need to, you can't really screw it up. Like the machine just following the, the existing grade is going to do fine. Okay. So then we got into the red areas, which are, and we actually identified them. And on the plan, we actually put what the contractor should be looking for right. when he's out there. So the red areas are the ones where you don't need grades. They can easily see when I get there, okay, I gotta get water from there to there. We just wanted to point it out and say, just make sure you pay attention. Okay. And it'll be fine. All and right. then the orange ones, again, are the ones where there's gonna be a little more work required. Um, and then we graded them out so that they would know how to grade it. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, that was all I had. Yeah, thanks, Chelsea. Ann? Um, I'm assuming that there, the grading is also to prevent standing water within the, the complex. That's, that's really the, in, the whole intent is yes. to make sure that water doesn't pond because that's the issue that they have in a lot of spots. Since the place is so old, right. they've had a lot of settling and you just got water ponding all over in certain spots. And that's the exact intent of the grading is to prevent I that. I owned a condo across the street and we used to have mallards every spring <laughs> in the parking lot. So that was, so I'm looking at it saying, yep, you guys, yep, I bet they have them now too, you know, because that's uh, a feature of living close to the <laughs> wetlands. Um, that's the only question, that was the only comment I made um, on this. I can just, the only other thought in the milling process, the debris or the flying dirt or whatever um how is that going to be handled if indeed it spreads out it doesn't usually spread and it's usually all confined within the trucks okay and obviously the major a lot of the stuff's just going to be brought off site you know any of the leftovers is just going to take it off site and okay. get rid of it because they have no place to get rid of it out here oh no, no yeah okay thank you all set yep all right um i don't know if anyone asked this um uh, so you weren't sure on the timeline of the whole project. Right. Yeah, they're, right now they're actually speaking with a lot of um, paving contractors. But the last I spoke to the association, even those contractors, they started talking with them in December. A lot of those contractors were actually already booking into December of 2022 before the plants close. And as you know, usually once you hit the first frost, all the plants usually close. Um, you can get pavement after the first frost, but you're paying a premium. So obviously they wouldn't, if they can't get a contractor in here before next um, fall, it's unlikely that they probably won't be doing this until 2023. Okay, and then if it's done uh, all at once or in phases, we'll need to know that. Okay. And uh, as part of that, uh, is there a specific erosion control plan what we did is on all the details, the ones where we have to, um, have to regrade, we're showing erosion controls in those areas. The majority of them, you don't have an issue because there's all existing curbing out there anyway. So the water can't get out. And obviously we'd protect the existing catch basins with silt sacks in any of the areas that we actually have to regrade. Uh, the areas where we're just milling and then repaving, we're not showing erosion controls because there's no grade changes that are happening. But where you do have 
uh, you're planning for erosion controls, those are detailed in your, uh, yep. in your application. Yeah, the, we have a detail for the erosion control. We, have, we show on the, those specific um, grading plans where the erosion controls are. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, I think that if the board is all set, is there anyone in the public that has any questions? Uh, sir? Again, Bill Bradstreet, Essex Street Town Meeting member. With what's going on, this development is what, 40 years old? Yes. A, a, pro approximately. Yep. Mm -hmm. And you're paving. However, there's a drainage system underneath the pavement or to the side. Does this project require that drainage system to be checked to see if it isn't silted up? Because obviously water will flow over the silt, but the bottom of the pipe could be silted up to restrict at some point, especially if it hasn't been done in 40 years. Uh, is that something that is done, should be done, can be done? Get into that. So what we did is we spoke to Steve King as well. We reached out to the association to verify when the last time they cleaned their catch basins. As you know, catch basins require maintenance. They have sumps in them. If you don't maintain them, they're eventually gonna fill up. When we were out doing our field work, um, the catch basins actually looked really clean. Okay. So we're trying to find out now from the association when the last time they had them cleaned. Based on the inspections on the outfalls, usually when the drainage system silt up, you'll see it at the out outlet pipe. Okay. None of the outlets represented that any of the drainage systems were having issues. Um, obviously, repaving over these isn't gonna have an issue. The only thing, if you were going to maintain them, you would get into the manholes and you would jet out the manholes to clean them out. Um, if that's required, we can do that before or after it's paved. Um, but it wouldn't affect the whole paving project. Again, my concern is, as been mentioned, uh, things have a tendency to settle mm -hmm. if any of the pipes, which are, I don't know how long they are, 20 foot, whatever, if between the joints they had somehow settled so that you have a, a blockage or a silt up, but the water still flows. Is that something that would be discovered and rectified? Uh, I, I understand you're looking for the association's records to see if and when or what was done. My only concern I don't live there. My only concern would be if there, there would be a water obstruction of sorts that might cause damage to somebody's property or not be proper. Yeah, and that type of um, blockage in a pipe should show up evidence of at a catch basin beforehand. So if we saw evidence that there could be a potential issue with a pipe, obviously before we pave it, they would probably camera it take a look. I didn't see any evidence of any of that in any of the drainage structures, but that's something that they could look at, or the association may want to look at, because the point that you're bringing up is if you pave the whole place and then all of a sudden you have a pipe problem two years later and now you have to dig it out. Not what you, you want to do. Right, exactly. I've seen where the town in certain areas have used the camera system to, use cameras. to mm -hmm. check the pipes so that Obviously, nobody's going to want to crawl through that, but the camera would do the job. It just, I don't live there, but I would like to think that they're concerned about either creating a problem or not solving a possible problem at some point in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, okay. The, okay uh, one more question. Okay, yeah. Is it staging? Is it? Will it be a, a staging required? And if so, wh where would that happen? Based on the, again, the grading areas, there's no real staging required where they're just milling and paving. The grading areas, there's not a whole lot of grade change going on. And that's why we actually did them at 20 scale details, because it's a lot of spot grades. Um, we're dealing with, you know, one foot elevation changes. Um, so I don't anticipate that there's going to be a lot of material that has to be stockpiled. So I don't see that they're going to be doing a whole lot of staging. Um, everything most likely is going to be all contained within the existing paved areas anyway. 
with the existing curbing. Um, the association has already talked to a lot of the pavers. They're trying to verify if they could actually keep the existing curbs that are out there. They're just Cape Cod berms, but they're in relatively great shape. So, you know, you would think, well, it's only a Cape Cod berm. How much could it be? But the linear feet that's out there, it's, it's a pretty big number. So anything we can save is worth saving. So everything's kind of being controlled within the existing paved areas. Thank you. That's all. That's that, Mike? Yeah. Uh, okay, so the, the applicant has requested that we uh, continue the, the public hearing. Um, pending uh, which work that you need to do. Uh, so we need to go out and, based on my meeting with Steve King, we have some evaluation work that we just have to do out at the site with regards to the catch basins, and then we're going to modify the plans, as I had stated, to just show so that when we file the stormwater permit, um, we can show on the plan as well where the catch basin is located and what we're doing. Um, when's your next hearing? Our next is March the 10th. That, that's why I was asking the question. Will you be ready in two weeks? Or do you want not to, a lot of time. Go? Probably not, but what I'll do is I will request to the 10th, and then if we're just not ready, I'll just request a continuance, if that's okay. Uh, okay, so if uh, someone can make a motion, we'll continue the public hearing until our March the 10th. I'll make a motion to continue the public hearing for 47 Collins Street, Old Salem Village Condos, uh, pavement and grading project, DEP file number 14-1375, uh, continued to our next hearing. I'll we second. March the 10th. Yeah. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is a request for determination of applicability. Uh, for 11 Rice Street, uh, the RDA number is 22-02. The applicant is the Danvers Housing Authority. Hi. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. We good. So, good evening. Um, for the record, my name is Katherine Andrewchuk. I am with Allen and Major Associates. I'm here tonight on behalf of the Danvers Housing Authority. The Danvers Housing Authority has an existing development located at 11 Rice Street. There are five existing buildings, four of which are residential units for um, the elderly, 60 and older, and one community building. The Housing Authority is proposing maintenance repairs to the existing bituminous parking lot, driveway, um, and some portions of their sidewalk. There is a proposed project going on um, to convert four of the units into ADA accessible units. So in conjunction of converting these existing units to ADA accessible units, the Housing Authority is proposing maintenance repairs to the roadway to um, correct cracks deteriorating break broken up asphalt here um, with the ada unit conversion to the south of the property is crane brook um, so a portion of this site is located within 100 feet of the wetlands and um, 200 feet of the riverfront about under um, 9,000 square feet within 100 feet around 21,000 square feet within uh, the 200 foot riverfront it is a maintenance project. We are keeping within the existing developed areas of the site. There is no proposed um, increase to the impervious area. Where the most southern part of the existing developed portion of the site is, there is an existing wooden guardrail. That's to remain, it's to be untouched. Erosion control measures of silt fence and core logs will be installed along that boundary separating the proposed maintenance repairs from the um, resource area. Um, again, it is a maintenance repair for the local housing authority. Um, they are seeking a negative determination of applicability. Are there any questions? I took a, a bike ride around the site yesterday, yep. and on, I think you said it's in the southern Yep. I mean, the road behind those buildings is right on the bank. 
called yes. the Chicrain River. Um, and there's going to be work done down there? There is going to be work done th down there, not past the guardrail, no work beyond there, but there is existing paved areas down there, yes. And do you have an erosion control plan? Yes, um, you're looking at it now. So along that whole bottom southern side, we are proposing erosion control, um, silt fence, and curl core logs at the top of that bank there. Silt sacks in the catch basins um, as well. Thank you. Um, okay, let me uh, uh, hand it off to other members of the board and we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. So uh, first up, Mike, do you have any questions? I don't, no. No? Okay. Um, Chelsea? Uh, sure. What's the anticipated timeline for this project? It is actually currently at bid right now. Um, again, the architect, a little miscommunication, but um, because it is, they are converting um, outside of the riverfront, but there's no touching to the buildings. They're just doing interior work to make those accessible. So um, bids are due at the end of next month, I believe. Um, so as soon as, assuming funding is available, um, <laughs> because we've been seeing some high prices, but we've had some coming good as well. It is local, it is for the public um, municipality, so it is a public bid. Um, so low bid contractor will come in. Um, it's not any private solicitation of that nature. Sure. Um, and do you think this will be done all at once? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, no phasing, no broken up, everything cracked at once. Okay. And do you anticipate, like, I know this is going to be, um, a a grading project as well. Do you think that will change the flow at all or are you going to? Nope, everything, uh, we're not, no in introduction to new uh, direction of stormwater runoff. Um, some of these catch basins, they are uh, tilting. So we are correcting the collar of the catch basins to, uh, so that they're not sinking around the area. Um, but there's no change. Again, it's really in the, it's the same already existing previously developed areas um no change of flow or direction for stormwater okay uh that's all i had okay thanks chelsea and no no questions i've been around that site i've seen it before Excuse me? i've been okay. around the site before uh, yeah just a quick question where are our jurisdiction lines i mean they're um yeah they're hidden right there right where apparently that is the 100 foot and then uh, from the river the yeah mm -hmm. Sorry, i have it in a color over there you want me to grab the colored one that would probably, if okay. you don't mind right there yeah, right where it. you got it so that's the about 200. the 200. Mm -hmm. and the so much of the site the previously developed site um is you know so there's no alterations it just the biggest concern is uh, erosion control with the yeah. Everything's going to be milled and then repaved. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's there's no change. Around. Yeah, no change of existing grades. Um, I mean, within you know an inch or two, just to level everything out. Okay. And I, uh, I know you said you were the project was out to bid. Yeah. Uh, do we have any idea when the work will actually take place? So if this happens, how some of these public bid projects go is as soon as the project is, I believe it's at the end of next month, that the bids will be opened. Funding will be reviewed. There will be a reference check on the low bid contractors. Um, it goes through the state. It probably takes about a month or so to go back and forth to get all of the contracts signed. Um, so if this is the end of March, say beginning of April, beginning of June, I mean, it's probably somewhere in June, ideally, um, you know, is when we're looking at this. You said you're going to do it all at once. Yes, everything's all at once. Um, again, there'll be some interior building work and then some site work. The state, not staging or phasing, but whether the building work is done first or the site work, I don't know that um, response at this moment, but knowing that site work has a limited time frame, um, you know, that that would be closer to this season than, you know, moving into 2023. 
Okay, uh, I'm presuming if your timeline is so short that funding mm. is all set? Funding that we have, funding, or you know, there's X amount of money. I've had two of these unit conversion projects happen. One came in a couple million over, and the other one came in within budget. So uh, oh. um, that is, there is funding allocated. Um, you know, it's kind of a matter of uh, what we're seeing. Out here, it's really just asphalt. Um, and you know a concrete dumpster pad for the right now the dumpster just sits on asphalt we're going to put it on a concrete pad same location that the dumpster is already in right now um so hopefully it's as high as asphalt and oil prices are going right now um you know at least that aspect of the project is simpler um okay. but yeah okay um this is a public hearing, is that right? Mm -hmm. All right, is there any questions uh, from the public? Okay. Uh, hearing none. Okay, uh, members, uh, how would you like to proceed? Well, I can make RTA. a motion that we issue a negative determination of applicability for this project, D DCC file number 22 dash, what is the number? 202. 202. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, with the condition that erosion controls be maintained as needed, that the catch, catch basins be in inspected and repaired or replaced as required, yep. and that the existing grades be maintained as close as possible. Yeah, the there's finished floor elevations everywhere. Can't really change the grades out here. That's okay, um, that no, sounds good, Mike. Uh, is there a motion been made? Is there a second? I second. second. Yeah, both second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, Thank you. you. Thank you. Um, okay, next up is a notice of intent for 41 Choate Avenue, DEP file number 14-1376. The applicant is William Madden. Uh, the applicant has requested to continue to our March 10th, uh, 2022 meeting. So if someone can make a motion, we will continue. I make a motion to continue to March 10th meeting the 41 Choate Avenue DEP file number 14-1376. Motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's the March 10th. March 10th. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you. And number seven on the agenda is a notice of intent for 51-55 Pickering Street. DEP file number 14-1374. Uh, the applicant is DCAM Construction. And before I uh, ask, they've requested a continuance. And I just want to bring it uh, out to the meeting's attention that it seems to me that work is continuing on that house. Yeah, so they're completing the exterior. There could be no more new alteration in the, in the front portion, so no new impervious. So. The building itself, they're welcome to work within it on the saw, add siding, do those ulterior. But they're just not working within the 200 foot river. Front. Exactly. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, mm. thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, if someone can make a motion, I will continue that uh, application to the March 10th meeting as well. I make a motion that we continue the 5155 Pickering Street DEP file number 414 1374 to the March 10th meeting. Motion to be made. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. On our agenda, is there any old or new business? Um, no, I'm not sure if I had emailed the commission. I believe I had noted it, but Abby Omed has withdrawn their pavilion project. I believe the commission had done um, a site visit there not too long ago. So which, they have which project? The oh, pavilion project. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, right. They've actually withdrawn entirely? that. Um, they're working with Steve King on some stormwater stuff. It sounded like, and it was uh, maybe going back to the drawing board. So it was best to withdraw at this time. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. All right. Um, I've seen you sitting here all evening. Is it? <laughs> do, uh, do you have anything for us? The shorter answer is no, but I'll introduce myself. I'm Donald Thompson. I'm a resident of Old Salem Village, and I was here to gather information about the condo project at 47 Collins Street. Oh, good. Gotcha. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Good organized resident. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him here before. He's on top uh, of okay. it. Uh, 
if that's the case, I think we can have a motion to adjourn. Right, I just had one thing on, uh, if I could bring up. So I was out for a walk in the Danvers Port area with Valerie on Monday, and down off of Harbor Street, is that Mead Street that goes mm -hmm. down? So we walk down to the end, and it, there's a sign there. It looks like a brand new sign. Yep. Uh, please enjoy this public Likewise. area. Yeah. The whole thing is collapsed in. It's a it's a mess. So I was just thought I'd ask, what's going on there? We need money. <laughs> it's just it, that's a natural open space access area, but um, you can't access it right now. Yeah, no, it is. T it's a probably a ten foot drop. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I laugh, but it, it, Chris Sanborn has. But put the in, sign's brand new. Yeah. <laughs> we'll make sure the sign doesn't fall in, but. Um, so we're gonna I mean, maybe. Sign a little bit just no, I don't know. Out. Well, so we're waiting for some. I'll what? tell Chris Sanborn, and there, there's no plans in the works over there. I mean, I would say that's one of probably three sites that definitely need bank restoration, but that's not something in the budget Probably at the moment the for, <laughs> I don't know. Who would that go before? A, a different board or? No, that would go in front of Concom, but it, mo it would have to be either, you know, Chris Sanborn under the open space mm -hmm. entity or Steve King coming in as the engineering division. You know, the, fi the Endicott Fishing Pier, that bank was failing, so yeah. Yeah. Endicott yeah. parked it. But right here, there's no, no one saying, hey, I have the money to fix this bank over here. You know, Danvers Rack or, you know, there's no one that has that initiative or that funding right now. Okay. We look for grants, I, ho I hope, but it's, yeah. We'll make sure the sign doesn't fall in. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. Uh, I just have one more thing before we adjourn. Um, on North Street, the end of North Street, the northern end of North Street, there's a wetlands there, and I've spoken to George about this, that apparently there's some beaver activity and uh, there is some flooding going on there. And uh, I'm not sure if that's ever gonna come in front of us for anything, but something's going to need to be done down mm. there. Just mm. so some members, if you're down in that next to the woods, just take a peek. Take a look. But the one lot in particular is, is flooding already. Uh, wow. Yeah. Mm. Wow. All right. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Uh, if someone can make a motion to adjourn. No one wants to leave? I'll make, no a, motion. To I'll make a motion that we adjourn the Conservation Commission meeting of February 24th. 2022. Motion to be made to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay.